Well, African Christian Democratic Party leader Reverend Kenneth Mishra has welcomed the lifting of the state of disaster declaration, but he's still steadfast in his opposition to COVID-19 vaccine mandates, saying that people should be allowed to choose whether they want to be vaccinated or not. The Reverend joins us tonight to talk more about the latest developments following the address by the President. Reverend Mishra, always good to have you on the program. So the DA believes that these new regulations and even what is being done in this 30-day window is basically the state of disaster being enforced through a different guise, so basically a different name for the same thing. Do you agree? Yes, we, we agree, particularly when you look at the uh, draft regulations that members of the public have been requested to comment on. Issues that are raised there are of much greater concern, I think, than the state of disaster we just had. You know, when you talk about the number of people who will be allowed in churches, and you say there is going to be a ceiling of 1,000. And if it's more, then those people must be vaccinated. I mean, this is almost an impossible call. Impossible. Why? Because churches must be open to all. People who are suffering, people who are in need, people who need prayer, people who are depressed, and so on. So for people to be told, you must first produce a vaccination certificate before you can receive any help, that is totally unacceptable. Churches that have always been towing the line are now saying this is too much, enough is enough, government is taking us for granted. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying to government, if you want people to remain friends and to cooperate with you and work with you, you cannot impose such an impossible thing. Just think about it, sir. just think about it. How long is it going to take? How long is it going to take for, uh, let's argue, for argument's sake, say 1,000 people to come and stand in a queue to, for their certificates to be looked at, to be scrutinized? And how are pastors expected to, uh, to know the real, the counterfeit, and uh, the false? How are they expected to, to, to discern that? Now, people will be encouraged to be dishonest. Because if a person does not want to be vaccinated, and yet they want to go to church, and they know that the number of members are more than a thousand, they are going to be tempted to go for the counterfeit, to pay and get something that is not real. So government is doing something that is going to backfire badly. So I propose uh -huh. to government, yeah, I propose to government, if you want to continue working with churches, that put you where you are. Now, if you remember, the majority of people and voters in South Africa that have been keeping the government, the ANC government, where they are, have been coming from churches. Now, if those people turn against them, it means they are saying goodbye to government. All right? So definitely that is not going to happen. So, Reverend Mishra, if the requirements as things stand are, as you're saying, impractical or impossible to implement, what would be a practical way for churches to play as far as, a, let me say, a practical role for churches to play in the management of COVID-19, given that it's going to be here for quite a while? You know, churches have been complying with the current regulations, uh, hygienic uh, regulations, sanitizing, putting on the masks, social distancing. They have not rebelled against that. They have been doing that. And, and because they've been doing that, there has never been a report that there are infections that are increasing in churches. There's never been such a report, all right? So we are saying allow churches to continue doing what they were doing, regardless of the number. If they do what they were continuing to do, then we will not have infections that people are exaggerating. Mm. And if there are more than a thousand, now suddenly they're going to have, when there are churches already, that we're meeting with more than a thousand people indoors. So it has not happened. And it, this new infection that people are dreaming about will not happen. Uh -huh. So given your strong feeling then, and it's a feeling I must say that was uh, echoed last night by a reverend that we interviewed. I think it was Reverend or Pastor Derek Moswana who was also saying something quite similar to what you're telling me now. The ACDP this morning tweeted that the number of submissions as far as the public participation process that government has now opened up, that the number of submissions is still low. Are you actively encouraging people then to lobby for the position you've just stated? Definitely. It is the right thing to do. Any pastor, any pastor who 
would want to apply recommendations that government is putting forth is going to be forced to discriminate against their own people. Mm -hmm. It is discrimination. And for a nation that has suffered oppression because of the color of their skin, now that's the same nation. They have to suffer again because of the piece of paper called vaccination certificate that is totally unacceptable. You know, if we did not have the background we have, we would say maybe people might be understanding. So in our minds, apartheid is still fresh. Oppression is still fresh. Being excluded from places you want to go to because of your color of the skin is still fresh with us. Now, we cannot think about discriminating people on the basis of their vaccination status, particularly, particularly, because um, it has been proven, and nobody denies that, even the president himself admits that vaccination does not protect one from being infected and does also not stop one from infecting others. So why force something that is still an experiment? We have never, in, since we are born, we have never heard of an mm. experiment that was forced on the whole nation. To that be is fair, unheard of and it must be rejected. To be fair, Reverend, uh, what you're saying then about the vaccines, the point of the vaccine was never to stop infection and transmission. It was very much to keep people out of hospital and reduce the number of deaths, and which is why even the scientists are saying South Africa is now able to open up because there are fewer people becoming seriously ill, fewer people actually dying. But I want to go back to the issue of the submissions because that is now where the power to an extent is in the hands of citizens and organizations such as yours. If there is such a strong feeling that these proposed amendments are so impractical, why are the numbers, why is the number of submissions still so low? Well, a number of Christians, unfortunately, maybe have not been guided on what to do. We are busy doing that now. It will be a different story, I believe, next week. You have people who have just been praying, praying, and praying only, and not doing something in addition to their prayers. But now we are saying, you are complaining that you don't like one, two, three. So if you don't like one, two, three, and you have an opportunity to uh, express your feelings and to make a submission, do it. After this Sunday, I think the numbers are going to um, increase exponentially. So we have to agree that in the beginning, we were told, we can let's go back to the first statements that were made by the president before even the, the hardest lockdown. Uh -huh. People were told, if you want to be safe from this, once the vaccines become available and you want to protect yourself, you must vaccinate. So that was in, used. It is not incorrect. It is not correct to say that was never said in the beginning. It was well, said in the well, beginning. Of, Let's go back to the records. We are almost out of time. Uh, we've gone back and forth enough, I think, on the issue of what the vaccine is meant to do. Final question. Easter's coming up. What is your message then to religious leaders ahead of those big Easter services? Are you saying they should disregard the amendments in place, the temporary rules over this 30-day window, which include limiting the number of people who can congregate and indeed the requirement in larger gatherings to check COVID-19 tests that are negative and indeed vaccine cards? Are you saying they should what disregard I'm saying that? To, what I'm saying to churches... Uh, preparing for Easter is that do exactly what you did last year. Last year after Easter, people went to their churches and there was never a report that there was an outbreak of new uh, infections. There was never such a report because they behaved well, they did what they were told to do, let them continue doing that and forget about vaccination certificate.